don't think it is, okay? We are going to meet in Vancouver. Yes, I'd love that. Going to meet in Vancouver. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Open Mic Foundation. And welcome on this Saturday night in South Africa. And it is, I think, 11 a.m. in Vancouver, Canada. Am I correct? You are bang on. It's exactly 11 a.m. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And Thank you for taking the time and joining us on the Open Mic Foundation live storytelling this afternoon. Um, we decided to do it today on a Saturday to um, honor um, Adrienne White that's with us from Canada. And she has this beautiful story that she would like to share with us today. But before we go into these details, um, Adrienne, please introduce yourself, where you're from, and before we start with the talk. Okay, I can do that. Yay, thank you for starting with an easy question. <laughs> I'm in Canada, as you've already said, I'm in the west coast of Canada in a city called Vancouver. I'm from uh, the eastern portion of the country. And, uh, and I've been here for a really long time. So the work that I've done, I've got years of work in corporate and in nonprofit, uh, leading communication teams and culture change. And um, I work from home now, not just because of COVID. I did it before it was the popular thing to do. <laughs> and I focus my work on women, career women, who are finding that even though on the outside they're really successful, they're feeling something blocking them on the inside. And yeah. uh, so I work with women to help build their confidence and really get their career on track. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, being in corporate for over 20 years, I can clearly relate to that. Um, and I want to say thank you for doing that. I think there's not a lot of women out there and coaches out there that do help women in the corporate space that can help them, you know, you know, get that feel unstuck and help them to move along. So yeah, great work you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank I mean, you. how did we how did we connect? Okay, I do know the answer to that. How did we, I cannot remember how we connected? One of my friends locally was on a yoga retreat, I think. And she met oh. you on a yoga retreat, right? Yes, in and Bali, she, that's correct. Yes, yeah. yes, it was okay. not me in Bali, unfortunately. But, <laughs> but she told me about you and she said, I think you guys need to connect because she really appreciated the, um, what she'd heard about your work in terms of people sharing their stories and helping make people in communities stronger through- yeah experience and the stories that they share so yes. she thought we needed to meet and she was right you're awesome <laughs> oh thank you so much I appreciate that I really do I really do now it all came back to me all right so let's get into this talk and your story that you are sharing to the world today is about straight talk about women and the heart yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give it over to you. I'm going to ask you some questions. We have two viewers on, guys. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Please yeah. send through your comments, your questions, share your thoughts, and you guys are welcome to connect with us. And Adrian is on our Facebook. If you guys do need to connect with her and if you want to reach out for any help that she is doing from a leadership perspective and woman in business, please do reach out. I'm happy to provide her details if anyone is looking for it as well. So over to you. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, for anybody watching, here's how you will know if you're in the right place. This is relevant for you. If you have any women in your life over 40 who you care about. Okay, so um, the, I came to, what I'm doing is I'm sharing in the, in the community and it started as a Canadian project. I wanted to reach women from coast to coast in the country 
sharing with them some of the myths, uh, the misunderstandings around women in the heart, specifically around heart attacks. And then I was on a few American podcasts, and then I was on an Australian podcast, and then you and I started talking. And so it's become kind of global, which is amazing. And uh, I have a lot of work still to do in my own country. Uh, but that said, I'm so thrilled that we're doing this because when you look at, and don't, it's depressing. So I'll just tell you, when you look at the stats about women and the heart, it's the number one killer of women. Well, we're all going to die. So, you know, what do you do? You do your best, right? That's what we yeah. do. We, we yeah, do our best. We do our best. That's true. But he, here's the thing. When I learned that most, <laughs> most early heart attack signs are missed in women, I thought, what? How's, what? How's that even possible that most heart attack signs are missed? in women. And so I went on this exploration to find out why. And I, I volunteer um, at the hospital. Well, I'm sort of burying the lead on this. So here's the truth. I had a heart attack. And then it was a very, uh, it was a very polite, uneventful heart attack. And my American friends laugh at me and say it was very Canadian of you. But I was in a restaurant <laughs> and I had a, a, a very polite, quiet heart attack. It was actually early heart attack signs, not that early. Uh, but anyway, I ended up, I went to emergency in the little village just to get it checked out because I thought not all was well. And I was right. I had a heart attack when I was there. So they sent me to a big hospital and they put in three stents. And then they said, you know, really, you should have quadruple bypass open heart surgery. And uh, yeah, so that was an adventure. I learned a lot. How, and, old, how old were you at the time? Honey, I'll only answer that because it's you. <laughs> uh, barely 50. I was barely 50. Wow. 51, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. so since then, I've been volunteering at that hospital talking to people and their families who are just about to have open heart surgery or are a few days out because you know bless the medical profession they are awesome at what they do and it's a very different perspective than someone who's had a lived experience right absolutely yeah so we can talk to the families <laughs> um, and and the people and give them um, some peace of mind and some common sense direction to make the healing process easier. Anyway, as I was doing that, I, and I would always congratulate women because when I learned that most heart attack signs are missed in women, especially the early ones, mm -hmm. I realized, wow, for us to even get in a hospital bed, we have already beat the odds in a big way. Yeah. Like seriously. And it was really sweet. I have to tell you a quick story. One of the volunteers um, is most of them are men. Uh, and this guy was new and he was noticing quite accurately that almost all of the people we were visiting were men. And his comments, you know, sort of sounded like, well, you know, it's hard for men. And I said, do you want to know why there are more men than women? And he said, sure. And I said, well, to put it bluntly, most women don't survive the heart attack and get here because people don't know the symptoms and for myriad of other reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Anyway, so he looked at me. I said, honest, it's true. So it's it's a really relevant um, conversation, I think, if you have any women in your life that you like. And it's funny, one woman once said to me, what's scary, eh? And I said, well, if you look at life that way, but 
my intent is to share with love, to share with optimism, to mm -hmm. share with um, like knowledge is power. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm not a believer in living in fear. That's just my choice. I think it's a waste of energy and I don't have a lot of energy to waste. But it was interesting because I was in a restaurant with my friend and she thought she's older and wiser than I am. She thought I was having indigestion and it was the restaurant manager who took her aside and she said, I think your friend is having a heart attack. So it was because of that, that my friend braved driving in the big city. It wasn't really, but it was to her and giving me a ride to the hospital in my car. Yeah. So I'm talking a lot. You say something. No, no, I'm, I'm listening. Right. Because me personally, I mean, you know, I do these, I do these talks to learn from from the storytellers right and i'm over 40 so for me it is so so important me hearing what you have to share because we are not aware of the signs i can personally tell you i'm not yeah when we first had the conversation i was in awe of your story and that is why the reason why i wanted you to come into open mic because there's so much more people out there there's so much more women that does need to hear what you have to say it is so important, right? Based on people's experiences and what they've been through and all the information that you've learned, it is so valid. It's so important because we actually never think of ourselves as women, right? Well, let me tell you some of the signs. How about? Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. So I was having lunch with a friend of mine and I took, took a sip of water. And I immediately felt like I had the flu. And I thought to myself, that's weird. Can you get the flu in a nanosecond? Mm -hmm. And uh, then my friend said, you know, let's, let's get a cup of tea and we'll have a chat and then we'll order lunch. And so I thought I'm half, you know, I'm half British. So I knew that tea fixes everything. And, <laughs> and it did. I felt so much better. So we were chatting because she, she doesn't live in the city. So it was really lovely to have a catch up. We only do this a few times a year. And then we ordered lunch and then lunch came and I was a wild girl, girl and I had dairy and gluten, which I'm not intolerant to. I just try and keep things a little balanced, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, then I thought, I, I feel queasy. And again, I thought, there's no way that dairy and gluten could make me feel this way. I don't think that would be bizarre. And I noticed that my arms were really heavy and mm -hmm. tired. You've got fabulous hair. So when, yeah, well, I usually say when you're putting in a light bulb ahead of you, um, but then one woman I talked to, she said, oh, it's like when you're blow drying your hair and it's like, okay, <laughs> let's go with that. And and that your arms get sort of achy and tired and sore sometimes. Well, it was that feeling, but needless to say in the restaurant, I was neither putting in a light bulb nor brushing my hair. And so there was no reason for my arms to be so heavy and tired. And I was getting, I was definitely, I felt very fatigued and for no reason, but I have fibromyalgia. So I'm very used to feeling not great. So I was, I was able to dismiss that. And then I felt a little pressure in my neck. It was so bizarre. It was like, there's something in there that doesn't belong, which of course there wasn't, but that, that was the sort of pressure it was, it was bizarre. And then short of breath, but to me, that sounds like panting when I hear short of breath. So mm -hmm. it was just it was just, it took a lot of effort to talk. Anyway, my friend said, are you okay? Because I wasn't my usual responsive self. And I said, you know what? I told her a few of the symptoms and I said, I just don't feel right. And ding, 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 alarm bells went off because 
when my mom was 50, she had a, a very low key heart attack and she used those words. I just didn't feel right. And I thought, oh, oh, really? Oh, come on. So <laughs> we went to the little, uh, it's, it's a small hospital. And we just went into the, into the hospital and they took me very calmly and quietly eventually into emergency. And they hooked me up with all of the, the wires. And so I would feel icky, bad for about five minutes and then it would pass. And everybody was asking me if I was in pain. It's like, no, no, no pain. I said, I feel sick, but that'll pass. And the nurse said, what do you mean it'll pass? I said, I don't know what to tell you. That's the way it's working. I feel really gross and icky bad. And I squirm around a lot and then it passes. And then it didn't pass. I just felt icky bad. And the doctor came up to me and he said, Miss White, it appears you're having a heart attack. And I said, oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I've just been squirming around in this bed so much. I've completely messed with your wires. I'm sorry. He said, N -n no, you're having a heart attack. It's like, oh, okay. Who knew? So that's what I mean. It was, it was none of this that we see on TV, right? Like, so yeah. if you and I had talked, if I asked you, Tell me what a heart attack looks like. What would you say? Oh, wow. Um, your chest is tight. Oh, yeah. You are suffocating. You cannot breathe. Yeah. Um, you know, you are getting red and probably turning color in your face. Um, you're gasping for air because of, you know, tightness. That's what's shown on TV, right? Let's be honest. And that is one of the reasons why women die unnecessarily earlier than we need to because mm. what we see in film and television does not depict the reality for a majority of women and for some men quite frankly so so that's one of the reasons that I really want to get the word out there because mm. truly it's not what we've been led to believe and yeah I mean, the, the symptoms that I just shared with you, if you felt nausea that you couldn't explain, if you felt that your arms were tired and you were just tired and you couldn't figure out why, before we'd had this conversation, would you have said, you know, it's possible that this is heart. Perhaps I should go to the hospital. Probably not. Because Ooh, you know why? Or the yes. cold or something like that, right? Exactly. And here's yeah. the thing. There are a few, a few reasons that I've found, commonalities, commonalities why women wouldn't necessarily say to their friend, you know, who's describing these symptoms, you know what, let's mm -hmm. get you checked out. <clears throat> because as women, we've we've grown up, it doesn't matter what culture we're in per se. Mm -hmm. There's a caregiving part of us where we take care of other people and oh, maybe yeah. not quite so well ourselves. Oh yeah. Right? Mm. Yeah. And so there's that. And because we're so good at taking care of other people, we're busy taking care of other people and other circumstances and, you know, earning money and taking care of things. We don't Life. have time, right? We don't have time for this stuff. <laughs> and so that's, that's a, a big reason. So it's not just that we don't know the signs and symptoms. We're also really busy. And because generally they're not as dramatic as they are for men. We, it's easy to just brush them off and leave them alone. But hey, with anything, right? Imagine, uh, do you have a place with really, really, really steep hills? Yeah, we do. 
Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking of San Francisco. That's what comes to mind for me, but yeah. Right. So say you're at the top, you're in a car and you can put it in neutral and you give it a little push to see how, how far it goes. Right. Well, in the early stage, you can probably get in front of it and stop it. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you miss the early stage and it's starting to go down the hill, you don't want to try and stop it near the bottom of the hill, do you? No, no, it's going to wrap you, you. Yeah, you won't win. Yeah. And similarly, similarly, if we, if people, and if we can help people catch the signs in the early stages, then like I've hardly got any damage to my heart. How mm -hmm. blessed am I? But here's the yeah. thing. You know what? If I'd been home, uh, true confession, I would have gone to bed, right? Yeah, I think we all would have, right? Because we don't know the symptoms or the signs or the signals for that matter. All of that, yes. Yeah. But here's the problem. I had a 100% blockage. Wow. Yeah, so I had a 100%. I had an 82%, a 76%, like <laughs> I may not have woken up from that particular nap. Yeah. And so anyway, I, I like sharing this not because I'm a fear monger. I'm not at all. But it's just such an easy thing to understand. And you know, do you have any women in your life who have ever said, oh, I don't want to be a bother? Oh, yeah, I do that. I do that. I'm, I'm yeah. going to admit that, right? Because yeah. you don't want to, and I'm a single mom, right? So you don't want to be a bother to anyone. Um, and more especially is that you don't want to ask, right? Yeah. Because so you don't want to bother people. Everyone's lives are busy, right? Exactly. So yeah. here's, and doctors, do you want to waste their time? Oh, no. No, no. So I want to give you a window into uh, it's changing, but kind of the current state of cardiac research, according to what I've read. Okay. Mm -hmm. And our Heart and Stroke Foundation has released information too that two thirds of cardiac research, period, is done on men. Now, what? there are lots. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the, the tools, some of the tools, I shouldn't say a lot, some of the tools we use uh, to test like the stress test on the treadmill, right? You know, the one, yep. apparently uh, from what I've read, that's not nearly as effective for women as it is for men in detecting an upcoming problem. And I know women personally who have had a stress test and it was fine. And then they had a heart attack. So the reason I mentioned that is because it's okay to pay attention to your body and listen to your gut. And if your gut is saying something's wrong and your doctor says, no, you're, you're just in digestion, then have it looked out, uh, checked out because it's, it's not their fault. You can get the best doctor in the world, but they have access to the same research, right? They learned mm -hmm. with the same research. And so yeah. it, this isn't a slam against the medical profession at all, but they're human. Why do you think that most is done on men though and not on women? Well, I have to start by saying it's not some patriarchal conspiracy. No, I don't think that either, right? But yeah. I'm, I'm not too sure, and I could be mistaken. Maybe it's something that I do need to look at. Yeah. How much, what is the ratio between women to men on this planet? Oh, and I say not, planet. Yeah, it's not far off 50 50. So, so hence why I'm saying how you conduct a research and studies two-thirds of that being men I mean it doesn't well, that's easy though so let let's like take a giant step back okay to the Victorian era oh okay <laughs> okay and so women here women were not people okay legally we were not people yeah. we couldn't vote 
Uh, also, uh, except for the bleeding and the kids thing, mm -hmm. women were sort of considered to be small men. Right? We are in the 21st century though, right? I know. Um, and that's why I, I mean, say really? it's changing. It's changing. It absolutely is changing. But I've also, from what I've read, um, women do not participate in as many studies. So, so on the one end, you can't blame, or I wouldn't say blame shame. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, we as women of the world have to take ownership and be responsible for this. Yes. Right? Accountability for our yeah. well-being. Absolutely. And just to be aware, um, you know, I mean, there's no reason logic says, okay, you've got a heart, you've got a heart. Well, we'll just test the heart. Here's the other thing. Women, we have those pesky hormones, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they really mess with the baseline of a study. I'm not sure that they that men don't have hormones. They do, but not, they do. <laughs> but they have not, PMS as well. I did say that out aloud. They do. Sorry, guys, but you yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. But they don't have the profound shift that mm -hmm. happens in the body that truly does make research more difficult. It really does. And when yeah. you're operating on fixed money for research, mm -hmm. you want to make it as easy and streamlined as possible right? Yeah. So logic is truly behind a lot of why historically, and also who do you value more, the breadwinner or the woman? Well, that's obvious. <laughs> Should was, we get into that conversation? Because tables have turned. Well, of right? course they have, right. Yeah. But when did cardiac research start? Not yeah. too years. No, um, I take I take your point. I really do take it. It's a valid point you're making. You know, as much as we can blame, um, you know, different industries and different ways of not accepting women, whether it's in the workplace or certain things to address inequality. You know, what I don't what I don't appreciate is us not stepping in. There so you if go. this is something and if this is something that is meaningful to us as women of the world we have to step in and take ownership yeah and that is and that is with anything right anything that we do anything that we want because we all share across the world we all share that but if we don't stand in order to take accountability for this then we shouldn't be we shouldn't be you know how what's the word i'm looking for well, we shouldn't be surprised that there's... We shouldn't be surprised. There's the word. We shouldn't be surprised. Yeah. We shouldn't be surprised. Definitely for sure. So, you know, the and I understand why a lot of women don't participate in cardiac research because we're busy people. But you know what? That's not an excuse. So, yeah, that's not an excuse. No, but so but now we're aware. So if you have the opportunity try to try to participate in cardiac research if there if you get approached um here's another interesting not really uh truth more men go to the cardiac rehab after a heart attack or open heart surgery than women and a lot of the women will take those men but they won't take themselves. Oh my word, really? I know. So it doesn't make sense. Well, you know, you're right. And especially in this century, it's almost as if we put our value and our worth together and it's tied into how busy we are. Right? Especially a few years ago, it was like a badge of honor. It proved that you were important if mm -hmm. you were busy. Yeah. Not productive, not engaged, busy. 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 Yeah. And so 
I believe it really, really comes down to, at its core, a question of worth and value. Because we're not always brought up to believe, we're not always in a part of society that believes that we have deep value and worth just because we exist, right? Not because of anything we've produced or done, we exist, therefore, therefore, we have worth. Yeah. So I think when more of us get that, truly Mm -hmm. get that, I don't mean an egoic way, of course, right? Yeah. But that informs how we take care of ourselves that informs how how we watch out for each other and it makes a difference to our communities at large i believe no it really would right it really really would um i must say i learned something um i think it was a couple a few months ago a few months ago a friend of mine, um, she she's a mindset. She calls herself the mindset alchemist, right? And she talks about the words that we use and what we say. And I'm being in corporate and obviously I always use the word busy. And if you think there are certain words that, that we use that inject a certain cortisone level that in you that spikes and it does certain things. And I learned so much of things from her. And she challenged me and she said, instead of using the word busy, use the word productive. I've had a productive day. Yes. And that's so important. It is right. Because it changes the narrative, how much you say to people, it changes the narrative of what you tell yourself. Exactly. And so I, I, I love that. And I'd like to add two words and a thought to that. Yeah. The, one of the other words that I use very sparingly is mm-hmm. but. Oh, yeah. Right. And yep. the other is should. It's like, don't Hmm. shit on me. (laughs) Don't shit on me. (laughs) Because, (laughs) right? There is so much judgment baked into that word. Yeah. I call it (laughs) shootable. Love it. Okay. I call it, I really, I promise you, I call it shootable. I should have did this. I should have did this. I could have did this. And I, you know, I say shootable. Because it basically encapsulates everything that you should. And it is a tiring word. And, and the same with but. So even with but, she even she even mentioned that to me. And I believe it. You know, then I started using the word however, you know, and I started replacing it because, you know, and we we are so not conscious of what we share to the people. Leave alone what you share to yourself, not realizing what we talk to ourselves it's so important it is you know it is so important and we don't realize the words we use how powerful and how impactful it is not to what others are hearing but more to ourselves exactly and i i'm really glad you brought that up one of the important phrases is i am a, a fellow named Wayne Dyer talks mm-hmm. about uh, when he was alive, he, he said, you're, you're speaking about God when you say I am, because we each have the creator in us. Yeah. And so what do we say? Oh, I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so over this. Right. And <laughs> so, so maybe be mindful about how you finish that phrase. I am powerful and strong and smart. And right now I'm experiencing some fatigue. (laughs) And so I I remind myself about that. The self-talk thing is of such importance. When you consider, we all have an inner child, right? We just do. 
that's it's part of I believe it's just true. Mm -hmm. So think of a three-year-old when they're learning to walk, right? And then they fall flat on their face. Mm -hmm. You don't say, get up, you little dummy. Do you? <laughs> no. No. And if anybody said that to your child, you would take them out. <laughs> Not really. But you would have words. And, <laughs> and yet, oh, my word. We say much worse to ourselves. Oh, yeah. And, and that's the, like the whole heart conversation yeah. starts with how we are with ourselves. And you, you probably recognize this from the corporate world, right? Six Sigma, lean, we're all about efficiency. Get it done, oh. get it done well. Save money, um, do a good job. The and new word is sweat the assets, right? That's horrible yeah that's the new thing they talk about they talk about people in corporate and they talk about let's sweat the assets that's the new lingo that's been told and showcased in corporates these days there's people on the call guys if you guys are resonating with this share your thoughts and share your comments with us right please i'm sure you guys have heard this before because it is not about it's not about who you you know are and how you're feeling. Corporates have totally taken it to a different level altogether, and in some cases, corporates due due to COVID have now realized in certain spaces, not everyone, how valuable mental health is within organizations. Exactly. Exactly. There, you know, death, destruction, and bad behavior aside, yeah. there have been a lot of gifts that have come through COVID. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, we have a lot in common, and we're from completely different countries. But We do, guys. And, and that is one of the things about Open Mic, right? Is to show people we are no different, no matter where we sit in the world. Yeah. But now we have this <laughs> common global conversation. Yeah. There's no one in the planet who hasn't, virtually no one in the planet who hasn't been impacted by this. And yeah. it was just, it's fascinating. Historians are going to have fun with us looking back. <laughs> They're going to, right? <laughs> I, can, I can just see some of the headings and the headlines and, You know, where they're coming up with, you know, the, it was started off in a lab and this is where it started and ended type of thing, right? Yeah. This is where yeah. it has been born and this is where it's been, yeah, I can just imagine some of the headlines that comes through. Right. That's yeah. funny. So I want to talk about trust for a sec. Yeah, sure. Because that's, we don't always trust ourselves, mm -hmm. honestly. Yep. Do we trust that when we make a promise to ourselves that we will absolutely keep it? I know I don't. I struggle with that. I'll do. keep my promise to someone else, but I don't always keep my promise to myself, right? It's amazing because everything we said, we, it's all about everyone else but ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We forgive everyone else, but we don't forgive ourselves. We give permission to other people, but we don't forgive ourselves. We trust other people if we don't trust. It's just, yeah. It's a little backward. <laughs> a little? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's certainly less than ideal. And we have a huge yeah. opportunity to shift it. Yeah. So much of the religious background, sometimes the, the cultural background, It's selfish to take care of your, you know, to put yourself first. Well, I would, yeah. I would say this, it's selfish of you to not make sure your resources are fully, that you are fully resourced, right? I mean, we yeah. all make, we all make uh, compromises and put other people first sometimes. Of course we do. Of course we do. But when you do it all the time. Yeah. that's you know it, it comes at a personal cost I remember when I was younger some people say you can't truly love someone unless you love yourself and I thought oh 
piss off. Like I am, I did. I thought I am the best lover of people. Yeah. And, and I don't love myself. So you're wrong. <laughs> really, I, that was in my twenties. You know, what can I say? My brain wasn't fully formed, but, but I really, I thought I'll show you, I'll show you who cannot love herself and love other people. I have yeah. a love on for the world. Right. And, and I did, but holy Toledo, did it impact my health? Like I had no idea, no idea. And yeah. So, so trusting yourself uh, is one of the other reasons. Now I'm going to, I'm going to attach that to the heart conversation is because if you're really just not feeling right and you try to explain away three or four of the things that are going on mm-hmm. and you, oh, I'm going to tell you about one of the women that I came across. She was in her forties, big energy, like really cool, strong woman. And I told her what I always do when I see women in the hospital in the cardiac ward, I said, you've already beat the odds. So congratulations on getting here. And I said, a lot of women are misdiagnosed. She said, you don't have to tell me I lived it. I said, really? Tell me more. Well, she's a heavy girl, right? So she went to her doctor and she said, you know, I just don't feel right. And, and he made it about her weight, really that she needed to go and eat better food and exercise more. Not wrong, but not right either. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so she went to another doctor because she just thought "Mm, something's wrong. So she went to another doctor And he said, you know, indigestion can feel that way. So try some, I don't know, Tums or Rolades or something like some, something for Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And she left and she thought, you know what? No, no, there's something else going on. Mm -hmm. So she went to a third doctor. This wasn't all the same day. She went to a third doctor and she said, listen, I'm not leaving until you figure out what's wrong with me. I'm either having a heart attack or organ failure or gallstones, or I don't know, because I'm not a doctor, but something's wrong. Well, yeah, something was wrong. Her aorta was dissecting. It was splitting. That would have killed her. So many of us grow up in a, well, hopefully your younger users are listeners don't experience this, but I knew I grew up in a children are to be seen and not heard yeah. environment. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and you don't waste people's time and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And you don't want to be hysterical. You don't want to be a hypochondriac, none of those things. But if you know something is wrong, go somewhere else right? If your doctor says, no, you're fine. Get it checked out. You're worth getting it checked out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And sometimes it is good to go and get a second opinion as well, right? Especially if it's not sitting well with you. And Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is as well is to recognize the signs in your body and listen to your body, right? Which we don't tend to do that. We tend to ignore it. Why? Because we're busy. Right. And when we're kids, those feelings that we get, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we haven't learned how to deal with them. So what do we do with them? What do we do? Push them away, stuff them down. Because a lot of kids don't have the blessing of having someone they can openly, truthfully, without consequence, talk to. So when we're young, we don't always learn how to deal with it. So then as an adult, we, we do what we've done our whole life, right? We don't know we, anything different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons I love doing, doing the coaching work that I do because it's a safe environment to bring up feelings and to love them. Mm. Instead of, don't, because when you push them aside, you're pushing part of you away. You're denying part of you. Yeah. But if so you true. can just 
Yeah. If you can just be there and love that part of you, yeah. it, it no longer tries to drive the car, you know, yeah. of your life. It might sure. be in the back seat, but it doesn't get to pick the radio stations and it doesn't get to drive. <laughs> wow, beautiful. You know, I do think, you know, you know, I'm going to encourage more women to step forward and share your experiences, right? It's never too late to share what we have gone through or is going through. You would never know who would reach out to you. You would never know. Maybe it is that support that you need. Maybe it is something that you do need to hear. Um, because we think that we don't have the support. Guess what? We do. We underestimate the support that has been there and you're just not seeing it. Or even too proud to ask for help. Because we yeah. all, yeah, and we all have that. It's your ego that comes into the way and you feel that you don't need help. Guess what? You do need help. Everybody needs help. Because no you're a help. human person. Yes. Everyone's human. Yeah. Everyone's human. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. a friend of mine reminded me because I was talking about what you just said. It's so important mm -hmm. that, you know, we can ask for help. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, but do it without manipulation and do it without guilt. <laughs> I said, what? He said, I got to tell you, I know a lot of women who put in a lot of guilt and a lot of manipulation. So do it with an open heart. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole new other topic, right? Isn't it? <laughs> I know. And yeah. you know what? And it even has its, its source in power and feeling powerless. So, yeah. yeah, but as you say, that's a whole other conversation. But do it when you know, when you ask, you, you do it with an open heart. Heart, yeah. The, uh, you do we have time? expectations, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have time to tell you another story? Yeah, we do. Go for it. Well, this, this is uh very personal mm -hmm. um and and embarrassing but i'm going to share it anyway one of the things i want to come back to is shame mm -hmm. and heart attacks okay but this is shame for a different reason i uh uh i'm self employed my mom lives with me and um when i found out that I'd had a heart attack, I was literally about to accept the same day to the hour that I was meant to formally accept a job, I had the heart attack. And I had no income. And I knew that I couldn't heal from open heart surgery. I didn't even think I had the strength to do that, to be honest, but I had no income. So, you know, that's an issue. So I said, you know what, let's, let's hold off on the open heart surgery. <laughs> let's just hold off so that I can accept this job and build up some money. And then, then we can do the open heart surgery. A friend of mine came over and she said, so I, uh, I was in the hospital. She said, I hear you don't want to have the open heart surgery. And I said, no, 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 no. Well, no, but no, I, I'll do it, but I don't have the money to do that. So I'm going to accept this job and, uh, and then, you know, make some money. And then it was all very logical to me. Mm -hmm. She said, okay, I hear you. But what if you were to ask for what you need? I said, honey, I don't think you realize how much I'd need. She said, yeah, I do. And it felt like the right answer. So I said, okay. So I set the date for the open heart surgery and I sent an email to my closest friends. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I know everybody has things on their plate and uh, so I want to preface this with, 
I absolutely respect that. And if this doesn't resonate with you, don't even think about it. But I told them what was going on. I explained to them some of the things that I'd need because you can't drive after open heart surgery. You often have to have a lot of doctor's appointments, lab follow-ups. You can't go out and go grocery shopping, right? I was just, yes. it, it takes a while to heal. And anyway, I was met with a flood of love and support. And some people who said, I can drive you places. Other Two other friends started a GoFundMe campaign. And I just felt so exquisitely supported that never would have happened if my friend hadn't encouraged me to ask because there was so much shame and even needing to, which brings me to shame in the heart. What I've discovered, and this probably shouldn't have surprised me, but it did. Women have heart attacks and don't tell people. So they're not asking for help. They're not sharing their experience because there is shame. And I have to confess, I didn't want people to know for a while that I'd had a heart attack because I had shame around. Maybe they'll think I'm not as strong. Maybe they'll think I'm not as valuable. Maybe, 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 maybe. And so turns out other women do that. Um, yeah, I, I want to say thank you for being vulnerable and trusting in trusting in me to have shared that. I know it wasn't easy for you to have done that, yeah. Um, but I want to acknowledge that that you are brave, and the courage that you just displayed right now. I'm honored to for you to have shared and been that vulnerable to have shared that part of your life. So I want to say thank you. You're welcome. And you Thanks. are brave and you are meant to do what you're doing right now. Yeah. That is why the people around you helped you to survive so that you could do what you are doing right now. And I got to meet you too. <laughs> you got to meet me too listen yeah. we will meet in person I did say that to you in Vancouver we do we will definitely meet together when the restrictions of COVID yeah I just want to say I have learned so much from you today I am so blessed and I'm so grateful that you know we got this opportunity to share the story on open mic and for the world to hear you um, I did offer for you to write a story into the journal for us at the next yeah. edition. Um, I think that'll be another, you know, way for you to communicate, you know, with everyone. And I just want to say thank you. It is, it was such an honor having you on. And I so appreciate, you know, you, what you've been through, um, all the encouragement and the work that you're doing out there for the women as well. Thank, really from the bottom of my heart thank you so much I do appreciate thank it you. my pleasure entirely yeah Thanks. we do have people listening I think people have been blown away by you Adrian um, there's no comments I think everyone's just taking it in I am going to share it onto our Facebook group for the women and I'm going to be putting it onto our YouTube channel as well wonderful thank you so yeah. much yeah, any last words? Um, Nilia says, thank you for your story. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, is there any last words or thoughts from yourself? Yes, be aware that the signs are different. Just be aware. Um, look out for each other. And the most important thing to remember is that you do matter deeply. Yeah, profound. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, okay. catch us um, next week. Um, we're going to be having a youth talk with some youngsters in South Africa. Um, stay tuned to what the topic's going to be on. You will also be able to see us um, 
on the YouTube channel. Um, it's Open Mic Foundation underscore. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We also have a private group called the Open Mic for Women. So you guys can just, you know, search it on Facebook and you'll see. We do have some exciting projects coming through as well. Um, and yeah, we'll hope to see you guys soon. I want to say, Adrian, thank you so much. Um, it's a beautiful, uh, it's summer in Vancouver, right? We're getting there. We're still in spring. It's gorgeous here. Okay. Yeah, no, Vancouver is gorgeous. It is absolutely stunning in spring. South Africa, we're entering winter. It's really cold. We've got the blankets and everything out. So yeah, <laughs> it's really cold. We don't have centralized heating like you guys. We have the fires, the campfires and things that keeps us warm. So yeah. <laughs> so That's thank so you guys cozy. so much. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, people from South Africa. Um, Adrian, thank you so much for your time and, and, and we're scheduling this meeting around and have a fantastic Sunday. Um, enjoy yourself and we will be in contact soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.